Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's old Pappy back with another one. And today we're going to be trying something a little bit different. Now, one of the things that I'm hearing out there a lot of times from players who maybe, um, you know, they get angry at the, uh, the pay to win versus the free to play guys is they say, well, I can't afford all the big stuff. I can't afford all the modules. I don't have a last stand. I don't have a, um, Oh, gosh, what else? I don't have an anti-control. I don't have this and I don't have that. Therefore, I can't compete. I actually don't believe that. Um, obviously, will those things help you? Of course they will. But I wanted to test this today, and I also wanted to test out these acid weapons at the same time, um, trying to find out whether or not they're viable for sort of a long-range hanger. Um, if you have more than one hanger spot, I mean, you know, you might want to have something set up just for long range, right? So anyway, I'm going to throw these on here. I have an Ares with um, some uh, wasps, which are the medium weapons. They, um, they are 600 meter range. And I have the sting, which is the light weapons on the top. They're also 600 meters. And if you haven't used them before, you know, they're, they're, I have a sort of a, a love-hate relationship with them a little bit. Um, they're not super powered immediately off the hop. I mean, you're not going to walk up and destroy somebody and just annihilate them immediately. But that's not how these weapons actually are built to work. You see that little indicator that goes over top of my enemy when I shoot him? That is indicating that the acid damage is actually continuing to hurt my enemies long after I finish shooting them. And so you get this initial burst of, of damage um, and then it it just keeps melting through the bot afterwards. You can just kind of picture it, eh? Like it almost like it, it hits you and all of a sudden it splatters all over your 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 chassis of your robot and it starts to eat its way through the robot uh, and now one of the reasons why these are good the love hate part of it is even though I, I'm more of a brawler guy and I'm more I really like uh, you know like the new ice weapons that just came out where you can kind of kill a guy in five seconds um, these weapons are good because they also um, eat through robots that have built-in resistance and so say the leech for instance or the phantom which has uh, I think I got it what is it like 90 percent resistance or something like that when it's in uh, the leech when it when it's actually leached onto somebody the way that Pixonic has set these things up, though, is that while the initial damage may be resisted by 90%, the actual acid damage does full damage. And so one of the things you can really do when you use these, these setups is to target the leeches, target the T-Falcons, target the Phantoms, anybody that is out there relying on invulnerability, basically, to uh, lay a smackdown on your teammates. And so, of course, how do you play these things? Keep in mind... Um, on these bots, I think there's only two premium modules I'm using in the entire hangar. And both of them are fortifiers, and I didn't even know they were on there. I totally forgot. I just I checked afterwards, and I'm like, oh, well, okay, I had some fortifiers. So the fortifiers are basically only useful if you put them on robots with shields. Particularly not the, the Ares, because the Ares shield is invulnerable. But, but say if you have, like, um, a Fenrir or a, uh, a bulwark, one of these ones, a tier is another one uh, that, that works really well with these fortifiers where they actually build up, I think they give something like 20% extra uh, strength to hard shields and, and also to the energy shields. Um, but otherwise, I'm just using straight out of the box stuff here. I, d I think I have a, a few of these damage um, uh, damage modules on here and maybe a, a shield module or two on some of these ones, but I don't have any phase shift. So uh, I can't just magically push a button and disappear. I, I don't have any control. So if someone tries to lock me down, I'm locked down. Um, but anyway, let's get back into the gameplay and let's just kind of see how I'm going here. So if you're going to use these weapons, what you want to do is you want to kind of keep an eye on the beacon bar and you want to also hang back and look for, look for moments to strike and opportunities. So I'm waiting for this guy. He's got a bit of a lag there. Maybe he's an Android player or something. There seems to be a bit of lag on the server today. Um, but I'm just basically anticipating he's going to come out behind there. I'm going to hit him. And look at the acid damage. See, he goes behind that, that um, at rock outcropping and I continued to damage him even though he was around the corner. See here, come on out there. Let's get, even get this guy over here, this guy hiding underneath that little module, um, that little whatever the hell it is, that bridge or whatever it is there in the canyon. No, he's not going to come out. We'll see if we can find somebody else. There's one guy, 600 meter range. Um, I should say, uh, one of the good things as well is that Pixonic actually uh, just recently buffed these weapons by giving them more accuracy. They were a bit wild, particularly the medium version of these uh, this weapon set. Because I'm running the same weapons here in my tier, I have uh, the sting on the top and I have the wasp on the side. Um, they were a little bit inaccurate, 
And so I think that's what Pixo did. They didn't actually give it much of a damage boost, but more of the, the little needles, the little whatever you want to call them, um, more of them hit target. And so you are seeing um, uh, and a sort of a roundabout buff of these weapons. And so you see there, there's a little bugger. He's a Loki. Um, one of the things I'm going to say about running these builds is that it's really important to use quantum radar. I know, again, lots of people like using phase shift, but I hardly ever use phase shift. I, you know, I would rather see my enemies. There's so many stealth robots out there, so many flying dragons and others that use stealth. I would rather see my enemy and hit them when they're not expecting it than just totally rely on some magic get out of free button, uh, the phase shift button, to uh, get me out of, uh, out of jams and problems that I find myself into. I don't know about you guys, but I would rather sort of avoid those problems in the first place than actually feel like I have to just mash the phase shift button every single time because my bad gameplay has put me in a place where I need it. So there we go. I, I use my quantum radar again. I'm going to try to hit this guy and and uh, yeah see quantum radar doesn't last very long but I'm doing my best. Now look take a look at the let's take a look at the time for a second here because uh, we're talking about is this build effective and what is it I'm actually doing out here. So there's only four minutes and 40 seconds left in the game and I'm only on my second my second bot and I don't think I'm playing particularly cautious here. I mean I'm right out in the open I'm just trying to to help my teammates here um, but I'm really liking this build and I think one of the reasons why is the 600 meter range right like um, a lot of the weapons in the game are 500 meters or closer and I just think that there's too many robots out there that can really run up on you really really fast like the white dragons or the phantoms or others that can just scurry or fly straight at you and if you get within 500 meters then you might as well be 15 feet in front of them because they'll be in your face and they'll try to take you down oh here comes a phantom let's see oh he, isn't that funny he just kind of popped back there he got a little scared when I started shooting him but um, you know, I, one of the things, you know, again, I'm, I'm using my top weapons here. One of the things about tier that maybe you don't know if you don't run them is it has this great uh, healing burst that happens when you when you drop your top weapons down. You get a little bit slower when you use them, uh, but when you drop your top weapons down, you get a big burst now of healing energy, and you um, when you only use your bottom weapons, you go faster and you're constantly healing. So that's why you see the green sort of going up and down on my robot, and I'm going to try to see if I can get a little bit more damage in here, shoot him with my stings, shoot him with my viper, get in a little closer. Um, I've sort of thrown caution to the wind here a little bit though, haven't I, right? Like I'm kind of right up in this guy's face um, I'm probably going to die, uh, but I'm sick and tired of looking at his ugly mug. So I'm going to come in here and see if I can't take him down. And this, again, is a great example of the only drawback of these weapons is that they are not close-range brawlers, right? They're just not really built for that. So that's more of a cautionary note. Um, I'm not 100% sure why I chose to do that, um, but I think I saw, I, I thought there was an opportunity there. So maybe in hindsight, I might have, you know, um, used that opportunity to kind of pull back. I probably, if I had been more cautious, I actually probably, probably could have spent another, uh, I could have finished the game in that bot. But let's just check out something else here. Now here's the Ravana, which is this new robot that came out. And I have the four, or it's three, I, sorry about that. I have three medium Dragoon style weapons here. It's called uh, the Marquess, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, I particularly do not like these these uh, weapons, but I put them on because I knew I wanted to do sort of, um, I, I wanted to play a long range game. And I also wanted to see how well they do against these damn Mings that you see flying in the background. So like a Dragoon, these things store up um, energy, they store up shots if you let them uh, reload, but they also shoot continuously um, if you don't. And so, you know, one of, the, one of the things I would say about them is that unlike a Dragoon, which does actually quite, quite a lot of damage, um, these things really don't do a lot of damage. And so you're going to see here, there's only about a minute and 50 seconds left in the game. Um, and uh, not to let the cat out of the bag, but I, 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 I kind of last the rest of the game in this build. And uh, I'm going to show you the footage because I want to show you the drawbacks to this weapon. Now you see here, there's an Arthur. Now Arthur, of course, is the uh, the Titan bot with the uh, slow lumbering bot, but with like an endless well of health and really, really powerful shields. Well, this weapon is just a waste of time against Arthur. That's why I'm barely even trying to shoot him. Like I, I, the only reason I'm, I'm actually am trying to shoot him is I notice my teammate to the left is kind of drawing his attention. So I'm trying to chip away at him from the side. Uh, but the split second he turns towards me, I just hover and I, I, you know, I hustle bound behind this rock because I just know um, standing in front of him shooting his shield, I think it's like, 
I don't know. Does anybody out there know what the hell it is? I think it must be close to 400,000 health or something, right? Like, I, I could literally sit there for three and a half weeks. I mean, the coronavirus will be gone by the time I actually chip through that guy's shield, which is why I'm just kind of playing this kind of sneaky little game. The split second he turns away from me, I hit him a couple times. I got to be careful because he has this thing. Everybody makes fun of it. They call it his uh, his big fart weapon, but basically he stamps his feet. There it is, and there's a concussive wave, and it actually took quite a bit of my health away. Um, but the nice thing about Ravana is it has this little sort of like a, almost a ba- built-in phase shift, and here I was a few minutes ago uh, slamming phase shift, and yet, uh, lo and behold, I actually have phase shift equipped, equipped to this, and it has built-in... Uh, almost like a dash, but it's a dash and phase shift at the same time. So again, I would always argue that with the Ravana, I know there's some guys out there using shotguns and maybe some guys are throwing the cryo weapons on or stuff. I actually don't think it's maneuverable enough to be a brawler. That's just me. I find that when you're not dashing and 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 um, you know and uh, zipping around the battlefield with your with your special ability, it's actually quite painfully slow, and so I would use it only as a medium to long range uh, setup. But anyway, let's take a look at how I did. Look at that, two point three million damage using effectively two bots. You know that I didn't do a lot of damage with that Ravana at the end. Um, not bad, eh? And that's with no special modules other than a couple fortifiers that just happened to be thrown on there. But uh, there was no uh, anti-control, no last stand, no death mark, none of that stuff. And so. Hopefully, this is just giving you guys a little bit of inspiration out there. If you're feeling a little down and you figure that you can't take on the wallet warriors, which is, um, you know, it's a challenge, you know, hang in there. And uh, I just hope that this gameplay has shown that you don't need these 5,000 gold modules. They definitely help. Don't, don't get me wrong, but you can do it if you just play smart, play careful, and choose the right weapon setups. So anyway, have a great time out there. If you liked what you heard or saw, please hit the subscribe button, uh, like it and share it with your friends. And if you didn't like what I saw or if you had some thoughts uh, to the contrary, please hit me up in the comments. And until next time, I'll see you on the battlefield.